Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be comparing two rifles that are a little bit outside of the norm. They are AR-15 adjacent, uh, but at the end of the day, they have a number of different things that separates them from an AR-15. One of the great things about these rifles is the fact that it makes for a really, really good suppressor host. And that is something that a lot of YouTubers are just not talking about when it comes to the IWI Carmel or the PSA Jackal. These rifles, in my opinion, are perfect for adding a suppressor because with it being a long stroke gas piston operated system, it's going to push all of that gas away from your face, uh, ejecting it out by the gas block instead of it being shoved directly into your face like an AR-15 and a direct impingement system. So that really lends itself to be a perfect suppressor host, but there are also some cons to it. So I thought I would do a comparison video between the IWI Carmel and the PSA Jackal. If you guys are interested in either one of these types of uh, rifles, this will be a great opportunity to help make a decision for you. Now I'm going to make my decision at the end of the video, have my own opinions, but that's all they are. They're my opinions and it shouldn't dissuade you from what you have already purchased or wanting to purchase in the future. So let's dive into it. We're going to start off with the IWI Carmel. And this thing is a beast, man. Uh, this thing is a huge rifle. Uh, it's thick with three C's. Um, it, it's definitely heavier than what you would expect. It's been reliable. It's been great to shoot, but let me tell you, if you're not doing your push-ups, this is going to beat you down <laughs> for sure. Uh, but let's talk about some of the great things that it has going for it. Uh, first and foremost is it has uh, ambidextrous controls. And for a lot of people that is not necessary, but it is a nice feature. So uh, safety lever, magazine release, bolt release, those things uh, are all ambidextrous for this. The only thing that it is not ambidextrous is the ejection port. Obviously, it's going to be stationary on the right side. You can even switch over the charging handle on this as well. So that is a uh, really cool feature for this particular setup. Since it is a long stroke gas piston operated system, you can fold the buttstock. That is a very SCAR-esque style buttstock, but uh, this allows for, uh, you know, better storage, easier storage on smaller gun safes, uh, or even if you're going to be doing some type of um, vehicle operation, this allows you to do that as well. Uh, I know that I have not really folded this and don't plan on folding it ever, so there's that as well. You have uh, obviously telescoping buttstock and a uh, adjustable comb as well, should you need to do that. Obviously, this is going to have adjustable gas and uh, it is going to be set up for um, either just standard operation or adverse uh, offer operation, which is going to be, uh, you know, like uh, suppressed. So that is something I really did like. It's easy to change. Uh, what I've done is just taken a, a round, stick it in here and move it back and forth as needed. It's going to have a 16 inch pencil barrel and then one of the cool little features that I liked was on the threads of the muzzle here uh, it has this little nut that allows you to swap out your muzzle devices to whatever you want to use. Now I use the Dead Air Sandman S suppressor because I'm switching it from AR-15s to these guys to AKs and constantly uh, moving it back and forth to different platforms so Having something like this that allows me to add a muzzle device, extremely easy without any type of uh, crush washer or uh, spacers or shims or anything like that, uh, made it very, very easy for me to install this. It took like 30 seconds. I mean, it was super, super easy, which is something I really did like. Obviously, it's going to be Stenagmag compatible, so you don't have to worry about that. So a lot of great things going for this rifle, but 
One of the biggest problems that a lot of people may have with this is the fact that even though it has a lot of the same manual of arms when it comes to an AR-15, a lot of the parts are not going to be AR-15 compatible. Uh, one of the biggest things is for individuals who are wanting to change out the trigger on this, this is not going to accept an AR-15 trigger pack. So regardless if you're wanting to put like a two-stage Geisley or a cassette style Timney or CMC style trigger, it's not going to accept that in this rifle. So a lot of people aren't even bothered about that because the trigger on this is actually pretty nice uh, for a two-stage trigger. You do have a lot of take up here and then it breaks over. I would say probably closer to like five pounds. So not a really heavy trigger uh, when it comes to a fighting rifle. So um, obviously, full Picatinny section up top with that uh, monolithic upper receiver. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's a very interesting take on a fighting rifle and I think uh, it will do a lot of people really good. Biggest hang up with this, number one, not AR-15 compatible when it comes to certain components, the more important components like uh, bolt carrier groups and stuff like that. And then another ding on this is that it's had a recall um, just, uh, just about six months ago. They issued a recall. Uh, this was one of them that was affected. I sent it in and it was gone for about three weeks, sent it back. But I will say I didn't have any problems beforehand and no problems since I've gotten it back as well. So um, take that for what you will. I will say that the quality of build um, fit and finish and everything on this type of rifle uh, is uh, really good, especially coming from IWI, that's what you would expect. So there is the Carmel. All right, so moving on over to the PSA Jackal. This hit the market last year and uh, a lot of people were really, really excited for it. Uh, I can tell you that this is a very interesting take on the same type of rifle. So that uh, ACR, that SCAR, the BR, in 180, those types of rifles, this is trying to mimic a little bit. Now it does its own little thing and we'll talk about some of the nuances with it, but uh, realistically it is a really, really cool rifle. So let's talk about uh, some of the pros on this. Um, it is going to be a lot smaller than the IWI Carmel. It is going to be more along the lines of what you would expect from an AR-15 than what you have seen from the Carmel or even like a SCAR. So the height over bore is going to be a lot less than what you would expect from the Carmel. Uh, and that may not be that big of an issue, but for individuals who uh, are you know doing competitions and uh, do force on force stuff where you're in close quarters, I hate using that word, but when you're in very confined spaces, height over bore does become an issue, especially uh, for, especially like competitions anyway. So there is that. A lot of the great things that's going on with it is full monolithic upper receiver. You have the ability to change the charging handle on this to the other side. Not very difficult to do. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult than the Carmel, but you can swap it over, so that's really nice. Just like the Carmel, it has a adjustable gas block, but it has eight settings on this. So you can finally tune this to the type of ammunition that you're running instead of the two options that you have with the Carmel. The lower receiver on this is an AR-15 lower receiver. So if you end up getting something that has full ambidextrous controls, you can run that on here. You can uh, drop in a AR-15 style trigger of your desire, regardless of what manufacturer it is, you can throw that in there. You can set it up to have ambidextrous safeties, so that's pretty cool as well. Uh, about the only thing that you have to do differently when setting this up is making sure that you have the correct back plate to retain all of their springs and stuff like that. So there is that piece of it. Just like the Carmel, folding stock, that's pretty nice. Uh, the stock on this is actually not too terrible. It has this interesting 
cheek riser here. It's just got one setting, either up or down. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just leave it down and it's perfectly fine. And then six adjustments on the telescoping uh, buttstock. So there is that. Another great attribute about the Jackal is the fact that uh, you can get several different barrel lengths on this, whereas the Carmel only has the one 16 inch barrel length. Uh, this is a 14.5 with a pinned uh, and welded uh, JMAC four prong flash hider, uh, the chemo mount again, so that I can swap the Sandman S back and forth. You can get a 13.7, I believe, and then 16 inch as well. In addition to that, you can also get it in 5.56 or 300 blackout. So uh, that is a huge advantage when it comes to the Jackal over the Carmel, is that you have that flexibility to purchase a complete rifle in whatever caliber you want, and then you can purchase the upper receiver in the other caliber, and you can switch it back and forth depending on what you're wanting to do. You know, maybe you set your 5.56 up for home defense, and then you want to swap it over and run the uh, 300 blackout for pig hunting or something to that effect, you can do that. So that is uh, something I really, really do appreciate. PSA doing in getting this set up uh, in multiple different barrel lengths and calibers. So that is a huge advantage to it. Some of the biggest downsides uh, to this is the fact that uh, PSA does have a reputation for uh, not having the best quality control, quality assurance or QAQC. Um, there has been a lot of uh, concerns of late. I know there's uh, several different YouTubers who have done uh, videos that uh, have highlighted some of the issues like the Picatinny section here being out of spec or these uh, screws here coming loose with the handguard coming loose as well. Uh, I know that some of the first iterations uh, would lose the retaining detent on the adjustable gas block uh, and the, this this uh, this plunger here would get yeeted out at the range. So I've seen a number of different videos with the uh, QAQC on this being substandard. And uh, that that's a problem that PSA is going to have to fix. Uh, I like their mindset. I like their innovation and, and some of the new products that they're trying to introduce. I like the idea that they wanna to try to get a firearm into the American public uh, as budget friendly as possible. I understand those concepts, but unfortunately, if they're going to be a powerhouse, they're really going to need to have to clean that stuff up. So I would hope that they would spend the next couple of years investing a lot more into their QAQC function. So there is the PSA Jackal. All right, so at the end of the day, which one would I choose personally if these two were the only options that I had? Um, to be frankly honest with you, I would err on the side of the PSA Jackal because of the versatility of the lower receiver being an AR-15 lower receiver, the different barrel lengths that I could get it in, the different calibers that I could get it in. Am I taking a bit of a risk on getting a lemon from PSA? Yeah, unfortunately I am. But uh, personally, I have had very good experiences with PSA, not only on stuff that they've sent, which I know people say, well, that's cherry picked, uh, but also the stuff that I've purchased as well. Um, I've just had good luck, I guess. So there is that. Now that's not to say that the IWI Carmel isn't something that needs to be talked about, because I think it does. I think it's going to suit a lot of people very well. I would just really encourage IWI to start expanding that rifle into different barrel lengths and different calibers as well. 300 Blackout is going to be the perfect caliber for this rifle because of how well it's going to suppress. I think that is one of the biggest advantages of these types of rifles. So for me, I would have to err on the PSA side because if I want to run a 300 blackout suppressed, this is going to be a perfect platform for it. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Sound off in the comment section down below. Really do appreciate you guys swinging by and checking things out. If you haven't already checked out the podcast, please do so. I've had some really awesome guests 
on uh, the channel here recently and uh, they're all awesome guests but uh, here recently over the last couple of months we've had some really cool people so swing on by there's a link to it down in the pinned comment in the description below so we'd really appreciate that with all that being said we're going to go ahead and get out of here thanks so much for swinging by as always freedom through strength here comes a high five catch you guys later bye y'all